this is the plant-based nutritionist Kath King from Seeking Health and today I'd like to talk to you about genes and gene expression. Now people use their genes as a convenient excuse for the health issues they have and often their doctors even tell them that their heart disease or their diabetes or whatever is genetic and of course there's no point making any changes in diet and lifestyle if it's your genes that are at fault. But is this true? I'm going to be sharing some science with you about this question, but before I get to my message today about genes and the role of diet, I just want to share with you the free gifts that Seeking Health is offering at the moment. At present, you can get a whole lot of free reports, videos, and a webinar on weight loss, and the link for those is just below in the video description. And when you sign up for these gifts, you'll get access to free reports and videos on the hunger hormone, the three huge mistakes that nearly everybody makes when they try to lose weight, and the nutritional science behind sustainable weight loss. You'll also get access to my webinar, Balance Your Hormones to Master Your Weight. And with that webinar, access to the Master Your Hormones self-assessment questionnaire and another report on bridging the willpower gap. So lots of really helpful material for you when you sign up for free. Anyway, on to our topic today. So I'll just start by saying this. Genes are important. My genes determined that I would be 174 centimeters tall and have blue eyes while somebody else is shorter with brown eyes. And I really like how Dr. Neil Barnard describes some genes as being dictator genes that can't be argued with, like the genes that gave me my height and my eye color. And he describes other genes as committee genes that don't dictate, but rather make suggestions depending on the conditions you give them. And these are most of the disease genes. So my committee type genes would be things that run in my family, like obesity, heart disease, and high blood pressure, and rheumatoid arthritis. Those are probably the big ones. But genes are not the primary determinant of health, thank goodness. Diet and lifestyle habits are, which is why I'm not obese and I don't have rheumatoid arthritis or heart disease and my blood pressure is that of a high level athlete in their 20s. And by the way, I'm not by any means a high level athlete and I'm nowhere near my 20s. Now, a recently published year-long study confirms that diet is the key. Subjects who participated in a diet, exercise and stress management program, so all the things that I educate my clients to do, not only lost weight and showed improved markers for cardiovascular disease, but also showed changes at the molecular level which researchers associated with improvements in their vascular health. And I'll come back to that, but actually the diet changed gene expression in these individuals. Now, the participants in the study either had coronary artery disease or had risk factors for it. And the intervention group was placed on a low-fat vegetarian diet with less than 10% of calories coming from fat. So it actually was a low-fat diet for change. They engaged in 180 minutes per week of aerobic exercise. They took part in a daily stress management program and attended weekly support sessions. There were 63 participants in the intervention group and 63 participants in the control group and the results were amazing. The prevalence of hypertension dropped from 41% to 17%. The obesity rate dropped from 60% to 37%. And the rate of people who had high cholesterol dropped from 54% to 34%. There was 
a 38% improvement in physical fitness, a 9% improvement in body mass index, and a 7% drop in triglycerides and a 7% drop in blood pressure. Really meaningful differences. Now, there's, here's, here's the thing that was really interesting. In addition to evaluating the participants' physical health, the researchers looked at how diet and lifestyle changes impacted on their gene expression. And they were able to profile over 22,000 genes and noted significant positive changes in 143 of them, most of which involved immune function or inflammation. And also the number of altered genes in a positive sense increased by over five-fold between weeks 12 and 52 of the intervention period. And what that means is that the longer the participants engaged in those healthy behaviours, the more their health improved. So participants in the control group, on the other hand, made no changes and hence they did not show improvements in their physical health, they didn't show improvements in their markers, and there was absolutely no improvement in gene expression either. Now, this study interests me for several reasons. First, it's rare that a study that involves dietary intervention involves the type of change that can actually make a difference. But this was a vegetarian diet with 10% or less calories from fat, so it was truly meaningful. And it's also one of the few studies that has looked at the underlying biology, which shows that when people do this, not only do they feel better and their biomarkers get better, but they're actually getting better too. So, you know, there are, there are all kinds of ways that you can manipulate a study to show biomarkers improving without any meaningful long-term results in terms of actual health. And there are also lots of ways to lose weight and feel better without actually getting better and sometimes, in fact, making things worse in the long run. But in this case, everything moved in the right direction and we really need more of this type of research instead of the reductionist kind of nonsense that goes on in the research community all the time or even worse the checkbook science that most people read about in magazines or newspapers after some big company has spent lots of money to get a specific positive result for their product by manipulating the methodology in some way. And so what we have here is actually a comprehensive change in diet and lifestyle that causes some really spectacular results in these people. Well, that's all for now. Have a wonderful day. Please pass this on as usual to anybody you think might benefit. And I'll be back to you again another time with more education and information on how to bring health, happiness and peace to yourself and to the planet. So please check out those free gifts at the link below and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.